There has always existed more than one level of attraction or conscious attraction, as I like to call it. In fact, there are four different mechanisms of subconscious attraction our body operates at on a endocrine level. Now, much of this does go unnoticed by the larger self-improvement competence community. We will discuss each one of them in detail, ending with what I believe is the most potent one of all and my personal favorite, plus the methods which you can use in order to fully realize their potential effects. Because each one of these pheromones has a distinct role and influence in our body and environment. Some are unique to the individual, some are more potent and more powerful than others, but what is also interesting to note is it has been scientifically recorded that not all pheromones have an equal effect on uh, the woman. In fact, the type of woman that you're in proximity to will have a equal importance to the reaction that you might or might not get. I will explain this shortly. First things first, one of the initial holistic ways to recognize the level in which you are optimizing your subconscious attraction or pheromones is by recognizing the rubric under which they fall. So many of the well-studied human pheromones are androgen-related compounds. So these are essentially a group of hormones that play a role in male traits and particularly reproductive activity. The primary androgen being the adored testosterone, but there are other notable androgens as well. However, research does indicate that men with higher baseline testosterone levels may produce more of certain pheromones which can affect social and sexual behavior. Testosterone's role in pheromone production and secretion is supported by studies showing that testosterone can enhance neuronal responsiveness to pheromones, suggesting a biological mechanism for increased pheromone production in men with higher levels of testosterone. So there is strong evidence that testosterone levels significantly influence the production and effectiveness of certain pheromones, particularly, particularly those associated with male attractiveness and social behaviors. However, the significant question in finding this knowledge is, well, which pheromones in particular does testosterone influence and how does it do this? Then we'll discuss the methods of increasing their potency. So let's begin with the first level and mechanism of human pheromone attraction. Starting off at number one, we have androsterone. Androsterone is a steroidal pheromone that is derived from, you guessed it, testosterone. It's actually one of the most studied and well-known pheromone, uh, pheromones pardon me, in humans and has garnered significant interest due to its potential role in influencing human behavior and attraction. It is primarily located in male sweat, urine, and saliva, and it is produced in higher concentrations by men, particularly after puberty when T levels are on the rise. The apocrine glands, which are located in the armpit and the genital region, are primarily responsible for the secretion of this particular pheromone, and these glands become more active during puberty and are influenced by these hormonal changes. Now, not everyone can detect this pheromone, its perfection, uh, perception part of me, does vary between particular individuals. This is due to a genetic difference in the olfactory receptors which pick up the pheromones. Uh, we'll talk about the VMO uh, a little bit later. Some people find the scent either pleasant or musky, and some people can actually perceive this to be unpleasant and uh, sweaty, and some can't detect it whatsoever. What is, uh, however, something more tangible, the genetic variation is menstruation. So we're all aware that uh, androsterone is often marked as a pheromone that can enhance sexual attraction. Some studies suggest that it can influence perceptions of attraction and social dominance. Women's reaction to androsterone can vary depending on their menstrual cycle, with some studies suggesting that increased sensitivity happens during the peak levels of ovulation. Now, androsterone is... Um, associated with uh, dominance, with aggression. In some animal studies, it's shown to influence the social hierarchy as, you know, which individual is perceived the alpha, so to speak. Uh, in humans, it may convey signals of more uh, masculine behavior, dominance, assertiveness, and something like that. Exposure to androsterone can affect your mood, your perception. For instance, it's been shown to influence the brain activity and emotional responsiveness although the effects can, you know, be subtle and vary between individuals. So the kind of, you know, holistic key features of this pheromone is first and foremost, the most studied pheromone in sexual attraction. 
The smell can be either pleasant, musky, or unpleasant and sweaty, depending on the genetic variant of the individual who's picking up the pheromones. But the key marker is of social dominance, assertiveness, and also mating preference. And we can also talk about influence on mood perception and emotional responsiveness. Now, the second pheromone is going to be androstenol, which is another steroidal hormone. Uh, pheromone, pardon me, is often remarked as the icebreaker pheromone due to its effects on social interactions and perception. Unlike the previous pheromone, it makes men appear more approachable, are more confident and uh, more friendly. It's thought to make men seem more healthier and youthful, and the perception can lead to increased social confidence and increased uh, ease in these kinds of interactions. The phrase coming to mind is a kind of glow or aura. There's just something about that man, a, a natural charisma, let's say. This is what people are interpreting or interpreting on a pheromonal level when these ideas come to mind. Now, exposure to androstenol can positively influence mood and increased perceptions of attractiveness. It's also associated with enhancing feelings of relaxation and friendliness, making social environments more pleasant. Now, from a more evolutionary standpoint, pheromones like androstenol have been developed to facilitate social cohesion and mating success by enhancing perceptions of health and vitality. So what essentially distinguishes androstenol is confidence and youthfulness markers, inviting aura and relaxation, that kind of parasympathetic response, perceptions of attractiveness and social cohesion, and attractiveness, I believe we mentioned or didn't mention. Now the third is androsterone, all these pheromones, they sound very, very similar and it's difficult for me. So this one is associated with masculinity and dominance and believed to convey signals of uh, strength and virility. There's also evidence to suggest that this pheromone can influence perceptions of attractiveness, women finding you know, men emitting higher levels of this pheromone to be perceived as more attractive. It signals health and reproductive fitness. In essence, the association with this pheromone is the promise of guaranteed fertility and the prospect of healthy children that they can reproduce with these men. Now, exposure to androsterone can positively influence mood and self-confidence and make individuals feel more assertive and self-assured, especially in social contexts. I like to think of this as sexual masculine power, uh, dominance, sexual attraction, virility and fertility, masculine vigor and self uh, assurance. Now, my personal favorite for a number of reasons, we have androstenone or androstenedione is another derivative of testosterone found in higher concentrations, typically in sweat, particularly in the apocrine glands, in the armpits and the genitals. And it's also present in semen and saliva. So several studies have indicated that androstenedione can influence mood and emotional states. Women exposed to this pheromone have reported feelings of uh, calm, of relaxation, and overall better mood, and also negating negative emotions, anxiety, depression, things like that. It's also believed to play a role in sexual attraction and social communication. Some research suggesting that it can increase perceived attractiveness and improve social interactions, particularly between men and between women. But what's really interesting to note for me and why it's among my favorites is it's been shown to have tangible effects on physiological responses. For example, it can increase heart rate, it can alter skin conductance, and it can also influence cortisol levels in women. Additionally, it's shown viability as a mood and cognitive enhancer. So women exposed to androstenedione during tasks requiring concentration or emotional regulation typically performed better and had better focus. Neuroimaging studies have shown that androstenedione can activate areas of the brain associated with social and cognitive and emotional processing. And these effects are more pronounced in women, which suggests that there is a sex-specific response. Women particularly are sensitive to this pheromone. Now, with its role in sexual attraction, it signals genetic fitness and reproductive health, and it can also help synchronize menstrual cycles and influence male selection. Beyond sexual attraction, it's also shown some evidence in social bonding and improved interpersonal relationships by enhancing mood and overall emotional concentration. So let's tally it up. Promotes positive mood and mitigates negative emotion, increased perceived 
attraction, influences physiological responses in women, enhance cognition and focus in women, signals uh, sexual fitness, reproductive health, virility, fertility, and promotes emotional and social bonding. So I believe it kind of is an amalgamation of all the former points and combines them into one of the most potent pheromones out there. Now, I, I mentioned previously about the VMO. So if we're talking about pheromones, we have to talk about the VMO. So this is known as the vomeronasal organ, uh, VMO. Uh, some people call this the Jacobson's organ, I believe. And it's a structure located in the anterior inferior portion of the nasal septum in humans. It consists of this uh, blind sac with a duct opening anteriorly and supplied with a rich vascular and glandular network. So basically, here's, here's the debate. So it's well established that for animals uh, detecting pheromones, the VMO is kind of the king for picking up these signals. But for humans, it's kind of less clear. The problem is that while we do have a VNO, the VNO lacks sensory neurons and nerve fibers, which are crucial for transmitting that information to the brain and us picking it up, which suggests that it doesn't have any function for us. Many researchers actually consider the human VM, uh, VNO to be a vestigial organ, meaning it's uh, an organ that we've, we've inherited, uh, but it's a, it's, it's a relic. It doesn't have any function. It's like the human appendix. It doesn't, doesn't function anymore. But here's the thing. The research actually indicates that in humans, the main olfactory system, rather than the VNO, is responsible for detecting and responding to hormones like androstenedione and other uh, pheromones. They actually conducted a study on pigs, which is kind of the closest human model, um, no offense to us. And they found that when they blocked the VNO, they were still sensitive to pheromones. So it's the old factory senses that are detecting these. And to be honest, all the previous studies wouldn't work if um, we weren't sensitive to these these pheromones. Now it's really befuddling to me how little people are receptive to these very real and potent chemical messages that can have so much social influence, but they, they, they also don't know how to optimize them, how to promote more of them. Now, some of these you will have heard of, but some of these you definitely would have. So there's, there's some nuances, uh, even in the familiar ones. So patience is necessary for you to kind of benefit from these fruits. So first and foremost, we're going to talk about activities that promote sweating. So increased sweat production are going to contain all these derivatives of the aforementioned pheromones. It's also going to help detoxify the body. It's going to help clean the pores. It's going to uh, uh, potentially make these pheromones stronger as well. Of course, additional exercise is going to be uh, beneficial for testosterone levels, which they're all derivatives from. But here's the nuance. The quality of your sweat is not uniform amongst all people. It's actually a multi-factorial uh, equation. So quality of your food, the frequency in which you eat, um, your hydration levels and exposure to certain chemicals and other lifestyle factors are going to influence the quality of your sweat. So Considering the quality of sweat you have on your body is also going to dictate whether or not you wash it off or if you keep it on for longer. If you bathe, if you use deodorant, uh, if you get my meaning here. So you can kind of be tactical in this way. When talking about the endocrine system and optimizing hormone production, uh, particularly pheromones, we have to talk about getting that seven to eight hours of sleep use blackout curtains, use cold room temperature, use weighted blankets, use your magnesium before you go to sleep, meditate, and you'll be golden. Of course, additional supplementation like zinc, boron, ashwagandha, fodoja, ginseng is all going to help with testosterone levels, which could also potentially affect pheromone production. I'd also merit foods like celery, parsnips, truffles, and they're all believed to potentially improve natural scent. Uh, zinc related food, oysters, shellfish, wheat germ, chicken, eggs, milk, all very, very important to have in your diet. And the last point is a significant one. Once you make the associations with pheromones being derivatives of the, uh, the androgen family. So the research on male rats indicates that sexual exhaustion induced by multiple ejaculations lead to high levels of circulating levels of um, prolactin and this hormonal shift can inhibit further sexual activity and reduce testosterone levels. Uh, during sexual exhaustion, androgen receptor expression and density decreases and estrogen receptors begin to go up. And um, 
you know, this is all associated with uh, sexual behavior, particularly the hypothalamus. It would further make sense that if you think about, you know, what is the function of pheromones? What are they really doing in your body? Well, they're supposed to signal to the opposite sex that you are fertile, that you can reproduce, that you want to mate and have off offspring. Ejaculation signals the antithesis in that capacity. It suggests you've already done this and that the task of reproduction has been completed. Therefore, the last thing on its mind in this state is to upregulate, I need to find another mate, because you've already done that. It, basically, in short, if you want to attract women, stop tricking your body into thinking that you already have, because you blunt its natural powers. And these are not theories, they're facts. Speak soon.